بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈے ود اے نیو ٹاپک آف سسٹم سو بفور آئی موو ٹو دی ٹاپک آئی ہیو سم تھنگ ٹو ٹیل یو لاسٹ ٹائم آئی واز ریکارڈنگ اے ویڈیو مائی کزن واز سٹنگ اوور ہیئر اینڈ اینڈ وین آئی اسٹارٹ اٹ سو جنرلی آئی اسٹارٹ دا ویڈیو ود اے گریٹنگ آف سلام سو یو ٹول می دیٹ دیٹس اونلی فار دا مسلم یور سو وٹ فار دا نان مسلم سو دین آئی تھنک اباؤٹ یو دیٹ از رائٹ سو I, I checked out the analytics, so my most viewers are from India. So we have the population, majority of them is either Muslim or they would be Hindu. So to greet them, I would like to say a Namaste. What, what do you do? A namaste it is, right? Or that Ram Ram what? I don't know. So, so you, 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 you let me know in the comment section, okay? For this course, I would keep it simple to be with my salam. For, from the next course, inshallah, I will change the greeting style and I would like to keep it something universal. So, into the topic. Now, the definition I wrote to, to save me this time, which I <clears throat> was talking to you guys. So, a system. A system is an entity that, makes, that takes an input, processes it, and provides a modified form of the input <clears throat> at the output. So, you know what a system basically is. So, a system is an entity. Entity, any substance, anything. That takes an input. Takes an input means what? That you have to provide an input. Something external. You provide it an input. Processes it. So process it means what? It, inside the system, we have something, some algorithm, some mathematical formulation or whatever it is. It does something with the, out, with the input that you have provided. And provides a modified form of the input at the output so means that when it does the process so the input that we provided has now been modified now that modified form of the input is now called as the output and it will give it to us as the output so we generally write it as what if i represent it as a block diagram So it would be like this, x of p is your input, you have a system, this is your system, and the output is y of p. So throughout our discussion from now on, we would be representing the input with an x of t and output with the y of t. So x of t is what? It's a continuous time signal. Y of t is a continuous time signal. So to process continuous time signals, we would have a continuous time system. Fine. Similarly, if you have a discrete time signal and you have to process it to get something modified and the output is a discrete time signal, so for that you need a system which is a discrete time system. Fine. Now the input-output relationship, well, this is the block diagram. The input-output relationship is generally written as x of t and arrow y of t. Similarly, for discrete time, you have x of n and arrow and y of n. So that's the general definition of it. Now, The other thing is something very important, a very important discussion based on systems is some basic type you can see of systems. So let's say the first that I take is an example is y of t is equal to x of t. This I'm telling you about the input output dependency, okay? So first you need to set your reference. If I set my reference to be zero, so one has to be the next value, that is the future value, and minus one has to be the past value. So what is important is the, the reference point. So let's say I want to check at t is equal to zero. So if t is equal to zero, I want to check this means that t is equal to zero is my reference point. So have a look, y of zero, this would equal x of zero. So which means that the point under observation, the output at this particular present value depends 
and the input of this particular value. So, which means that I could write that the present input depends on present, sorry, the present output depends on present input. So, this is one of the case. Now, if you have number 2, so let's say I take y of t to be x of t minus 1. So now again, let's say we take some reference value, let's say again t equal to 0. So we have y of 0, this would equal x of 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. So have a look, the output, y is the output, x is the input. So y of 0, the output at the present value is depending on x of negative 1, which means that the current output is depending on the previous input. The current output is depending on the previous input. So I would write over here that the present output depends on previous input. Is that fine? Now, if I have the third classification, y of t is, let's say, equal to x of t plus 1. And again, I'm checking it at t equal to 0. So, y of 0 is x of 1. So, y of 0 is the present value, whereas 1 is the next value. So, y of 0 is the current output, x of 1 is the next input. So, this means what? That the present output depends on future input. So this is something very very important that the present output could depend on three cases. Could depend on the present value, could depend on the past value, could depend on the future value. So if you know this concept, the concept of systems is going to be very easy for you. Now. Now the next we have is about the interconnection of systems. Interconnection of systems. So you know what interconnection means. Two or more systems are connected together. So let's say the first that I take is a series or cascade connection connection right so what you do in this case is that you have an input or you can write x of t you feed it into one system let's say system 1 now the output of the system 1 is feed it into another system system 2 and similarly, you can have n number of systems in which you take the output of the previous system and give it as the input to the, to the next system. And, final, and the output of the final system is our final output. So such sort of a system is called as a series of cascade interconnected system. Similarly, you can have a parallel system. In parallel system, what do you do is that you have an input, you provide it to a system, not a system, you provide it to multiple systems at a time. System 1, system 2, and there could be n number of these systems you provide the input to n number of systems and Finally, you add all of them. You add all of them and the final sum, the final sum is your final output. So such sort of a system is known as a parallel system. Now, you have the next is the hybrid system. The hybrid system. Uh, let me check about it once. Yes, it's, it's like this. So in the hybrid system, what do you do is that you have the input. You provide it to two systems. 
simultaneously system 1 and system 2 but the output of system 1 is taken and it's feed into another system system 3 and now this output is summed with this output and the final sum is our output now I've taken two and one systems so there could be n number of systems but the, the, the basic structure would be the same that first you give it to this like you first you take the basic input and you give it to two systems uh, simultaneously and then the output is given to another system similarly over here it can also be given to another system and then the output of the two are added and the final sum is the final output now the next is the feedback system so the fourth is feedback so as you have come along you have seen in the digital logic design course about feedback so you know what a feedback is you take some part of the output you, you feed it back in the input counters flip-flops registers they work on the process of feedback so what happens is that you have an input now you don't get it into the system directly okay so this is your system one fine now if this is the system and this is the output of the system so what happens is that you take the current output you provide it into another system let's say system 2 and then what do you do you you add it with the current input and that is then providing the system 1 so this is the output so these are the four uh, major uh, types of interconnections now uh, this is the definition these are the basic things so let me also write about what the properties of systems so let me remove this first I will only write down the names okay okay so uh, wait let's see if we have any point in the book so the book says what that a system can be viewed as a process in which input signals are transformed by the system or cause the system to respond in some way resulting in another signal as output continuous task signal discrete time signal then you have some examples you can read it yourself then you have the interconnection of systems so examples are given over here series or cascade example is a radio receiver followed by an amplifier a parallel interconnection example is that a simple audio system with several microphones feeding into a single amplifier and speaker system similarly for feedback interconnection you have a cruise control system on an automobile that senses the vehicle's velocity and adjusts the fuel flow in order to keep the speed at the desired level similarly a digitally controlled aircraft so you can read all yourself now the basic system properties so let me write basic system properties so the first uh, property would be what memory the second property is so let me go in the order of the book invertibility or the order doesn't matter okay when I forget so I will take the book we have causality we have time invariance the fifth is stability and the sixth is linearity so we have six properties basic system property depending on which we would classify the systems which means that based on memory we have a system to be with memory 
or it could be memoryless. Similarly, based on invertibility, the system could be invertible or it could be non invertible. Now, based on causality, the system could be causal or it could be non causal. We also have an anti causal. We'll discuss when this video comes. So, based on time variance, we have time invariant system. We have a time varying system. Based on stability, we have a stable system. Or we can have an unstable system. Similarly, based on linearity, we could have a linear system or a non-linear system. So that's about it. Okay. Now over here you don't know what a memory of the system means, what invertibility of the system means, what causality, time invariance, stability and linearity means. So from the next video, we will deal it each and every one in a single video. We can take more than one videos, but we will deal them separately. And you will understand it to the best level. For me, that's all about today. That's the introduction to systems. See you in the next lecture with the very first property of systems. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.